left of it right now. Yep, like this. It's like you hear it in your left ear. And if you talk to the right of it, like this. You hear it in your right ear. Or if you talk behind it. Oh, yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's introduce ourselves really quick. Um, my name's Alex Albea. I'm the founder of the Paragon Collective. I'm a producer, director, and composer on this project. My name is Victor Figueroa. Uh, I also helped uh, a lot with producing, uh, recording, and just the general editing uh, for the project. My name is Miguel Lopez. I did nothing on the project <laughs> <laughs> other than casting and some voices. And uh, that's um, what else did I do? You acted, bro. <laughs> oh, I acted in it, and that's yeah. really about it. Um, <laughs> I'm Johnny Farrow. I uh, also did a couple of voices and helped out with uh, some music and stuff like that and some art. The great thing about this project is none of it would have happened if it wasn't for Shudder. Shudder's this really cool streaming app um, that's dedicated to horror. It's run by yep. AMC. And basically they have new content added weekly, including films and series exclusive to Shudder, like Darkest Night. Right. So what's really cool about what we're doing with Shudder, uh, the episodes will actually be we released a week ahead on Shudder ad free yeah. and you can get shutter on ios android apple tv roku it's basically on any like browser yeah. and you can get your first free month of shutter by using the promo code darkest night at checkout so that's shutter.com mm -hmm. offer code darkest night and we'll be back after the episode's done and we'll actually tell you a cool little story from making this episode so without further ado <laughs> the debut of darkest night of darkest night of darkest night on shutter s h u d d this is <laughs> this is on iTunes. this is cuz on shutter they hear it ad free <laughs> listen with headphones roth ladbo center for advanced research project cyclops day 1 about to begin entering the laboratory now i'm dr kinsler i'm katie reed your new assistant and last one, right? <laughs> I guess I hadn't thought of it that way yet. Oh, are you not retiring in a few months? They, they told me that... 47 days, but who's counting? Right. And you've been at the center for... 35 years. And you're working on your PhD, right? Just a few years away. This is my first lab assistant job. The center is a great place to list on your resume. That's what everyone says. How about we dive right in, shall we? Say hello to your first... Subject. Severed head, crushed skull. Will all of our subjects be just the heads? As far as I know. What do you know about Project Cyclops? Not much. Get used to that. Just do what the people upstairs want, and you'll do fine. Where do we begin? Let's start by removing the eyeball. Here, take these. Now... Just squeeze the forceps on the eyeball and pull. Make sure not to pull too hard. We need to keep the optic nerve intact. Piece of cake. And got it. Very good. What now? Grab the syringe and withdraw blood from the optic nerve. All right. Done. Now? See the hole on the right side of that little black cube? Slip the needle in there and deposit the sample. Deposited. So what is this cube supposed to do? It will translate the blood from the optic nerve. If it works, it will show us the last images the person saw before they died. Wow. I knew the center was doing super advanced things, but I never expected this. Just what did they tell you when you got this job? Just that I'd be a lab assistant to a retiring scientist. Hm. Though they did make sure I signed the non-disclosure agreement. That NDA was about a mile long. Information on something like Project Cyclops would be extremely valuable to a direct competitor, but this experiment has never actually worked, not completely. Our researchers have made tremendous advancements on the cube, but all we've gotten so far in our trials is sounds or hazy images. Maybe I'm your good luck charm. <laughs> we'll see. Let's give this a shot. Notepad ready? Ready. Project Cyclops, trial four, beta seven. Time stamp is registering correctly. Initiating playback in three, two, one. Initiate. <laughs> you can't be serious. Really? This is lower than I ever imagined you would stoop, Reggie. Why, why would you think that now is the time to be making jokes? Yeah, you said to hear you out, but this is ridiculous. 
Yes, this isn't from me. I find the whole thing distasteful, but as the family attorney, I have to ensure you I relay the terms of the will. <laughs> there have to be laws against this. I assure you there are plenty of laws against what he's asking you to do, but as you know, your father was not one for the laws of men. Oh, unfortunately for us. Do you have any proof besides a signature? I mean, how are we supposed to know that this is coming from him and not you? If you were actually blood, Vivian, you would know. This reeks of father. <laughs> She's right. And this does seem like father's kind of thing. I'm only here because he invited me. I'm not trying to weasel my way into anything. Aren't you? I'm not trying to weasel my way into his will. Mm. It's already been written. I'm here because I received the same invitation that you did. Clinton did invite all three of you to his will reading. Yes, but... Can Vivian really lay claim to any of Father's wealth? I'm not laying claim to anything, Oscar. Again, I am here because I was invited, not because I wanted to be. And yet here you are. You know, you could have stayed in your ratty apartment, but instead, you chose to come down and rub elbows with us. Maybe go back home with a little pocket change? It doesn't change the fact that Father's will can't be real, Reggie. He thought you might have reservations about the authenticity of the will, so he had me record a video for you all. Well, load it up. Reggie opened the laptop and spun it to face the three children of the recently deceased Clinton Lobdo. Oscar, the oldest child, scowled as Clinton's face appeared on the screen. Claire was the one who spoke up first. Jesus. I thought we were finished having to hear him pontificate from his holy mount. And for these past few years, that holy mount has been his bed. Are all of you prepared? Vivian frowned at this. It was a strange question to ask about a video, especially right after having been read the contents of the will, which was already bizarre enough. Ugh, just hit play. Let's get this over with already. I've got a mani-pedi at nine. At night? My girl is coming to do a private appointment at my loft. Vivian? Yes, by all means, please get permission to proceed from the adopted one. Are you excited? That you might get a bit of father's money. I'm here because I was invited. She's right, you know. Oh, thank you. Not you. Vivian. She's only here because father invited her. Oh, God, I know, but it's not like she had to show up, though. She should know her place. Yes, Reggie, hit play. Quit looking at me like that and do it already. Jesus. Reggie hit play on the video, and Clinton Lapdo's voice filled the study. Vivian looked out the window at the brightly lit grounds choosing to listen and not watch him. Claire and Oscar stared right back at his image, the hate evident on both their faces. So, I assume all three of you are here, yes? Why is he? I'm sure that by now, dear little Claire has grown impatient. <sighs> She always was so easy to manipulate, like a yappy little dog, really. <laughs> Pull her leash a bit and watch her fall right in line. I'm still alive, though, aren't I? If you're seeing this, then I must be dead. Is that cliché to say? Uh, does it really matter? At this point, you have to listen to anything I say if you want to see any sort of inheritance. Well, I see no need in prolonging this. Each of you will find a wrapped box in an assigned location that Reggie will be handing out following our scheduled broadcast. Moving along, then. When I founded the Roth Lobdo Center for Advanced Research, I wanted to ensure that I never felt a sense of boredom again. Building weapons scratched that itch for a while, but soon I needed a bigger hit. I needed a way to provide myself with a lifetime of entertainments. The winner of the following competition will not only win all of my vast wealth, but also the center. And believe me when I tell you that the center is the crown jewel of this will. 
the experiments and innovations taking place within those hallowed halls are enough to blow the most advanced scientist's mind. I cannot begin to fathom how it will impact the person who wins the game I have planned. Each of you have been assigned a box. Inside you'll find a modified version of your favorite childhood toy, along with a brief set of instructions and rules. Pause the video, Reggie. They'll have insipid questions to ask. What kind of game? Why a game? I'm sure he'll tell us when the video continues. He will. Also, I've been instructed to tell you that the estate's perimeter has been secured. As you know, Clinton was very close with the police commissioner. This is absurd. Hold on, hold on. What's really supposed to happen here? We're all playing a game, can't you tell? He's always enjoyed pulling strings from behind the curtain. What do you think this whole thing is? He's running this like he would one of his experiments at the center. What are you both talking about? You never wondered why he didn't talk about any of his experiments that went on at the center? No, I always assumed that they were classified or confidential. They probably were. I asked about one of his experiments once. And? And nothing. He was really vague about it all. <clears throat> any other questions? I'm good. Not for me. Vivian? No. As I was saying, Mr. Lobdo has arranged for the estate to be secured for this afternoon's game. All staff have been dismissed with pay for the entire day. The borders of the grounds are being patrolled by a hand-picked team of SWAT and retired force recon. Why are you telling us that? So that when you read the full rules in your assigned box, you know that they are real and not empty threats. Threats? Really? <clears throat> Might be a good time to let Mr. Lobdo continue the reading of his will. Oh, yes, please, by all means, let Father continue to flap his gums. Wonderful. With your questions answered to the best of Reggie's abilities, we can continue. Please understand one thing, though. Failure to follow the few rules will result in forfeiture of the will's proceeds. Additionally, Reggie will be following along on the video feeds. So keep your wits and sportsmanship about you as you play the game. He will also occasionally be piping in my voice over the loudspeakers to encourage your progress or alert the others of, well, successes in the field. Ask Reggie any remaining questions you have and he'll present you with the location of your assigned box. <sighs> Good luck, children. So, any final questions? Um, how much? Hmm? How much is he worth? Uh, after the taxes, fees, and other subtractions, the winner today will receive the center and Mr. Labdo's assets and estate, which are valued in excess of $300 million. The center, of course, is valued around four times that amount due to the government contracts currently being exercised. Yes. So, if there are no further questions, I'll pass out the envelopes. Can we open these now, or are we supposed to wait? You can open them now. Go ahead. The three siblings open their envelopes at the same time, pulling out the thick manuscript paper their father always used. Scrawled in his willowy handwriting were two phrases. One... A location within the estate. The other, an amount of time they had to leave after the previous person. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I'm supposed to leave the room after Oscar? Yes, 40 seconds after Oscar leaves. As soon as he walks out the door, the game will begin. <laughs> well, I'll see you all on the other side, I suppose. Wonderful. 40 seconds starts now. I believe Mr. Labdo timed these out by distance. Oscar's beginning location is the farthest away, so he leaves first and has the most time to get there. Okay, so this whole thing seems strange. Like something you would enjoy, Vivian, but not the rest of us. Okay, Claire. Time. On your way, Claire? Vivian, I believe you have 20 seconds, correct? Yes. 
Later, Viv. Did Mr. Lobdo tell you anything about this game? Vivian didn't answer. The only thing that even let Reggie know she understood his question was the almost imperceptible smirk that appeared on Vivian's lips for a fraction of a second. <laughs> right. Well, it's your turn. <clears throat> yes, it is. After Vivian stepped out of the room, she headed toward the location indicated on her card. She couldn't wait to see what her father had waiting for her. As she walked, Mr. Lobdo's voice filled the estate over the loudspeakers. All contestants have entered the playing field. Let the games commence! When Vivian entered her assigned room, she smiled at the large wrapped box sitting on the bed. Bright pink, with a black velvet ribbon and a bow. Her favorite colors. She didn't waste time tearing into her package. Inside, she found an envelope and something else wrapped in the same pink wrapping paper as the box. She opened the envelope and read two words aloud. Good luck. Hello, children. I previously said that you would find rules and instructions inside your box. That was a lie. This is your first lesson today. Situations change. A leader must be prepared for that and be able to course correct when it happens. Also, as a side note, the door of the room each of you is in will now close and lock. I want everyone on an even playing field when the game begins, so no head starts. Great. Vivian tore the wrapping paper from the object in the box, <laughs> letting out a small chuckle and shaking her head at what she held in her hand. Yeah, this seems like something he would do. Vivian thought back to the first day she arrived at the Lopto estate. The size of the place had overwhelmed her, and Clinton, ever the cold man, had slapped her across the face when she began to cry. You mustn't cry, Vivian. This world will see you as weak if you do so. Don't ever let anyone see you cry. Here, this is for you. Vivian remembered what Clinton had handed her back then. It was the same thing she now held in her hand, but altered slightly. She remembered asking him what it was. It's a croquet mallet. It was given to me when I was a child by my father, and I give it to you. The absurdity of being handed a croquet mallet had calmed her down immediately. This mallet is yours now. Take care of it, and it will take care of you someday in the future. She was surprised to be holding the mallet as it had been stolen from her loft many years ago. The mallet she now held was physically different. But why are there spikes mounted to the head? Now that everyone has unwrapped their object, here are the rules. One, do not stray from the grounds of the estate. Doing so will earn you a bullet through the head. Two, do not kill Reggie. Doing so will nullify my will. He is only here to observe the execution of my will. Three, you may use any object in the house to attack your siblings, but the killing blow must be made by the object that is wrapped in your box. 
Four. There are no other rules. Whomever survives will receive the wealth of my estate and assets, as well as the majority stake in the center. This will shall only be executed if one sibling remains. If two remain, the will shall not be split. The stakes here are all or nothing. To the winner go the spoils. Good luck to each of you. This is Reggie. I just want each of you to know that this is not a joke. Thinking of it as such could lead to your own death at the hands of one of your siblings. I will be unlocking the doors in five minutes, so prepare yourselves. Good luck. Well, okay, five minutes. What can I do in five minutes? Okay, think. Okay, there has to be something I can do instead of just sitting around waiting for Reggie to unlock the door. Oh. Never relax, Vivian, in anything. Even if you're waiting, check your tools, check your emotions, check your motivations. Always be prepared. Vivian remembered her father telling her that on a Girl Scout camping trip. Right, check my tools. Okay. Right, it seems sturdy enough. Mm. Alright, let's test it out though. Don't want to be surprised by it breaking on me when I need it. Vivian sized up one of the wooden columns of the four-poster bed, hefting the mallet like a baseball bat. <laughs> Damn! It went right through that thing. Vivian dumped everything out of her purse except for the mace. Okay, check my emotions. I don't want to kill anyone, but if it's them or me, I need to be ready. I know that they think I'm weak. I can use that to my advantage. Maybe I can fake an injury. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, last check my motivations. I want to live. I don't want to die. I'm not ready for death and I can do this. I will live. Lobdos, prepare yourselves. The game will begin in three, two, oh. Uh, and keep in mind that there are traps scattered throughout the house. None that will kill, but plenty that will maim and disfigure. Just another thing to keep you focused. Anyways, where was I? Oh, right. One. Here we go. Vivian approached the doorway, checking the door jam for traps. Huh. Wonder what that is. Vivian was looking up at a thin, shiny piece of metal that extended across the entire top of the door jam. Is it motion triggered? Nope. What about pressure? Vivian sat down and untied her shoe. Once he was off, she tossed it right outside the doorway. <laughs> a guillotine. In time, just slow enough to take off the back foot of anyone that walked through. Nice. Vivian stepped over the fallen blade, scanning the long hallway for the movement of either sibling. When she was sure that none were around, she sat down and laced her shoe back up. Okay. Let's find someone to play with. Bingo. Oh, help me, Vivian. What happened? Vivian glanced around the room that Oscar lay within. Above him, there was a perfect square hole in the ceiling and a square panel off to the side. Although he was on his back, his right foot 
was folded next to his crotch. A trap door. When I hit the floor, my knee snapped in the opposite direction. Help me. Please. Just a second. What are you, what are you doing? Checking the door for a guillotine. Why would there be a guillotine? Why would there be a trap door? All of our rooms were booby-trapped. Well, there isn't a guillotine, so would you please help me? Where's your present? My what? Your present. Where is it? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Ah! Oh! Let's try that again. Where is your present? I... I... Think about your answer very carefully, Oscar. Okay. Very carefully. Okay, okay. It's under the bed. I tried to hide it. Silly Oscar. Did you think that it would stay hidden there? You never were very smart. Oh! <laughs> Here comes another! Fuck! Oh, God damn it! Vivian watched as Oscar pulled back the elastic of the slingshot. The spike ball nestled within the leather strap in the middle of the elastic glinted in the light. Without thinking about it, she threw herself to the right. Shit! Oscar dropped four of the spiked balls he held as he tried to load the slingshot a third time. Vivian, already on the floor, tried to swing her mallet at him, but her reach was just short. Spike ball connected just above Vivian's left wrist, but hit hard enough to break the inner bone of her left forearm. Vivian ground her teeth and stood, using the mallet as a makeshift cane. It was time to introduce Oscar to its business end. I'll just kick these away. Why are you doing this? What? Pulling this stupid spiked ball out of my arm? No. This game. Why'd you even come here today? Because I want what? What? God, that hurt. I was saying because I want what's mine. <laughs> Yours. You were adopted. I don't know why you would assume any of this would ever be yours. You never really bonded with father, did you? <laughs> sure I did. He never bonded with you, though. That much I know. All you were was a toy for Claire to play with. A living doll, nothing more. He never loved you. <laughs> <laughs> he never loved anyone, you idiot. He was like me in that way. Vivian swung the mallet before Oscar realized what was happening. It connected perfectly with his temple. Then Vivian tried to swing the mallet back so she could land another blow. It stayed firmly attached to his head, jerking his skull violently to the side. God damn it! Vivian took a step forward placed the sole of her shoe on the side of Oscar's face and kicked him off the spikes of the mallet. Vivian glanced outside the doorway for any sight of Claire. Seeing none, she stepped out. Okay, so if I were Claire, where would I hide? Wonderful. If you're hearing this message, it means that someone has killed someone else. I suppose we could be gauche and shoot off a cannon. But as we're Logdos, we shall refrain. Vivian has killed Oscar. Congratulations, Vivian. You are one step closer to inheriting my wealth and control of the center. <clears throat> As you both know, Mr. Lobdo was always one for time efficiency. As such, he wanted me to let one of the remaining players know the location of the other. Vivian made the first kill. 
so per Mr. Labdo's rules to me, I shall reveal her location after I play this. Leaders are always placed on a pedestal. Claire will try to remove you from yours, Vivian. Prepare and plan for this so that you can stay on top. Go ahead, Reggie. Mr. Lobdo recorded messages for every possibility. Moving on. Vivian is in the west hallway around the corner from the billiard room. Good luck to you both. Damn it. What do I do now? Okay, I can try to find Claire, but she'll know the direction I'm coming from and she might ambush me. I think I'll fall back to the billiard room. It's set up there. Vivian searched the room for the best place to ambush Claire from, deciding on the bureau on the far side of the room. If I put the spiked balls at the edge of the billiards table, Claire should walk over to them and look at them. Then I can club her with... Vivian paused, mid-thought, when the wood panel she stepped on depressed six inches. She attempted to pull her foot out, but the panels on either side crunched into her ankle. Shit! Wait. Wait, no. Vivian braced herself for what was about to happen, unable to stop it. The bureau to her left was leaning towards her, being pushed by a mechanical lever. The bureau fell upon her, its weight forcing her to her side as her foot, still wedged between the slats, stayed right where it was. <laughs> oh, Vivian. You always were so clumsy. Help me! Oh, you need some help, honey? I plan on doing just that. Vivian couldn't move her arms or hands because the weight of the bureau pressed down upon both. Her fingers could move but they were still in her purse, not on her mallet. Ooh, let's get this old bureau off of you, shall we? I can't move. Good. I wouldn't want you to. Vivian's mallet was close, but she knew she wouldn't be fast enough to get it before Claire attacked. She only had one option. I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry that he loved me more than he loved you. <sighs> oh, little Vivian. He never loved you. He loved me. Besides, that's the only reason he got you. For me. You're wrong. He told me how disappointed he was in you and that the reason he got me was because he tried twice and ended up with two children that were less than he hoped they would be. Time to quit talking. Look at your present. A hairbrush with nails instead of bristles? How embarrassing! He always thought you were such a vain pig. Hey, you stupid cunt! As Claire swung the brush in a savage downward arc, Vivian pulled out the mace from her purse, aiming and firing. Her aim was off, but Claire's attack threw her off balance and directly into the stream of the mace, altering the trajectory of the brush. Fury filled Vivian as she reached for the mallet and swung blindly. The head of the mallet connected with Claire's throat and Vivian jerked the mallet away. Claire fell to her knees, clutching at her throat, but it did no good. Bye, bitch. Vivian? Vivian, can you hear me? Vivian! She's coming out of it, right, Doctor? Yes, sir. Vivian? Oh. <laughs> there you are. Hello. What's going on? Shh. Relax. Save your energy for recuperation. I'm just here to inform you that you won. You've inherited the entire Lobdo estate as well as a majority stake in the center. <laughs> wow. Now, do you think you're up for watching a short video from Mr. Lobdo? Um, yes. Go ahead. Great. Well, let me just fix it up. 
Reggie placed the computer on the bedside table of Vivian's hospital bed. Ready? Yes. Here you go. Congratulations, Vivian. I knew you could do it. Really great stuff out there. I truly wish I could have watched you dispatch your brother and sister. I have one final lesson for you. A leader's work is never done. There is always one more thing for them to do. As such, this will be your first test as a leader in the real world. You may have control of the majority stake in the center, but you won't have absolute control until you have both a board and an upper management structure that fears you. Your final test will be to take what is yours. Do so however you see fit. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the images were so clear and wow, it's never worked like that before? No, <laughs> it hasn't. But something wasn't right. The images kept coming after the patient passed on. It might have been something in the new algorithm or some sort of a glitch or test images gone haywire. I'm sorry, Dr. Kinsler, but it feels like we're witnesses to a pair of murders. Wasn't that Vivian Lobdo the current head of this? We uh, probably shouldn't talk about it. Let's file the report to Robert and move on. So you're saying I should mention that the daughter of the center's founder just embedded a spiked mallet into this guy's skull? Katie. I know, I know. My lips are sealed. It, it's just... Why would Vivian Lobdo appear in this guy's death image? They've been perfecting these experiments for years. There's plenty that could go wrong. Then let's see what else can go wrong. Another trial? That's the only test subject we have for today. Better call Miss Lobdo. <sighs> Look, I'm not your official mentor, but here's some free advice. Don't push it. Do you want to cash those paychecks every two weeks? Keep your head down and your mouth shut. Now, it's just you and me in here, and I'm not going to repeat anything you say, but don't trust anyone else. I wouldn't. If you've got something clever or funny to say about Clinton Lobdo's adoptive daughter, try to hold it in. Roth Lobdo Center for Advanced Research, Project Psychops Day 1 completed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Dennis O'Hara's the man. He's so the man. Definitely. Oh, and dude, what a cool voice that guy has. <laughs> you too, man. I loved you and Missy in that too, man. You and Missy, really Missy was awesome to work with. She was really cool. You guys have to check this out. She's got a podcast coming out with Zach Selwyn that's fucking hilarious. And oh yeah, it's really dope. So like, you guys definitely need to check that out when that comes out. And uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> lots of it's new contents coming out on Shutter, by the way. Yes. Um, and basically, Shutter's this really cool streaming app that for four ninety nine a month, you get all of these really, really, really cool horror movies, as well as Darkest Night ad free, a week ahead of time, and lossless mm -hmm. sound quality. Say what? Yep. Lossless. Lossless. You get to yeah, really lossless. hear. <laughs> Miguel and you Johnny's voice. Nothing and is really lost. hear the lack of loss. <laughs> <laughs> nothing is lost on you. No, I mean, it's, it's a big deal. You know, I'm the kind it's of dude. It's all lossless on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, dude, I really, re like, we really put a lot of effort in this, and you can really hear the difference. It it, it really improves it. It does make a difference. It <laughs> yeah. does. It does. Lossless sound yes. quality is how You're supposed to hear to things happening around your room. Yeah. And what was, you know, one of the funny things from this episode, too, which we should bring up, is this Miguel had the original voice for Clinton. I miss that, yep. Miguel. So what I thought would be really cool was to have Miguel's Clinton recommend us a film from Shudder to check out <laughs> and let us know what and why we should watch it. For God's sakes, just read the thing already. Yes. You piped down, Oscar. <laughs> Quiet, Oscar. Room 237, 
was one of the most interesting documentaries I've <laughs> experienced in my 130 years on this planet. <laughs> that was about The Shining, right? It yeah. was about The Shining and the landing on the moon, <laughs> which may or may not have been my idea. <laughs> okay, but what, what makes this movie so good? Like, why do we have to watch it tomorrow? It's a conspiracy movie about the government. <laughs> Since you guys have not seen this the movie, this sounds fascinating. I'm like, I like. I, I hope it does. I can't I question exactly what right. I'm speaking because both of you, well, all three of you, frankly, are stupid, and I know because I saw the movie. So, like, okay, there's certain movies that on on Shutter that are like just straight up classics, like yeah. Nosferatu, Nosferatu, yeah. or like. You know, like a movie that's like Creepy everybody dude. has to see once. Yeah. Children it's like American Psycho. Psycho. Yeah. Can you pitch me American Psycho right now, Clinton? Ooh. <laughs> it reminds me of a one one time when I was in New York murdering people. <laughs> American Psycho. Psycho is based on, based on the original the, Clinton. The original Rondo. Clinton. <laughs> oh my god. Guys. I don't know by the math of that movie, you were already like hundred and five at that point. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool and besides, besides that I mean they have some really good movies that aren't just classics so you know if you've ever uh, seen Quarantine they have the original Spanish version called Rec on there uh, it's pretty awesome for a free month of Shudder you can go to Shudder.com that's S-H-U-D-D-E-R dot com and use the offer code Darkest Night again you that's your first month for free you get your first month for free and then you also get episodes of our podcast the darkest night lossless sound quality a week ahead of time and you don't have to hear us rambling right now yeah yep. shutter.com offer code darkest night come say hi to us on social and we'll see you on the next episode this is oscar lobdo here to read you the credits for darkest night chapter one the will reading narrated by lee pace dr john kinsler was played by dennis O'Hare. Katie Reed was played by Bryn Langford. Claire Lobdo was Missy Pyle. Vivian Lobdo was played by Callie Shuttera. Oscar Lobdo was played by the Johnny Farrow. Reginald Darden was played by Chris McKenna. Clinton Lobdo was played by David Cummings. The episode was written by Christopher Bloodworth and Jimmy Giuliano. Directed and produced by Alex Aldea and Victor Figueroa. Music composed by Alex Aldea. And live strings by Andrew Jocelyn. We'll see you.